Welcome to FFRF's Ask an Atheist on Facebook Live. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor, co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this weekly show that discusses common questions about atheism, free thought, and the separation between state and church. And I'm Andrew Seidel, FFRF's Director of Strategic Response. This past weekend, FFRF hosted our 42nd annual convention. We had an amazing lineup. Uh, it included many famous authors like Sarah Vowell and Jeff Charlotte, who wrote The Family, now that amazing Netflix series, comedians like Trey Crowder, two U.S. representatives, America's best Christian, Betty Bowers, and many other writers, students, and activists. And we'll be showing you a few highlights today. The videos are mostly already up on FFRF's YouTube page, and you can also find them at FFRF's convention webpage that's on our our website, ffrf.org slash convention 2019. Some big names didn't give us permission to film, but um, one of, that's one of the many excellent reasons to come in person to our national conventions. And we do pride ourselves on having the most affordable national convention in terms of registration. And we also do reprint speeches, if given permission, and we usually are, in FFRF's newspaper, Free Thought Today. And these are also going to go online. Our editor, PJ Slinger, is hard at work finalizing the November issue with an entire section of photographs and coverage from the convention. So if you're not already a member, you can ask for a sample copy of Free Thought Today. Mark your calendars now. For next year's convention, we will be in San Antonio, Texas from November 13th to the 15th. The Hyatt Regency, San Antonio, it's right there on the River Rock, and it's right after the presidential election. So, Andrew, I certainly hope we'll be there to celebrate, but if not, <laughs> it'll be more important than ever for those of us who um, care about separation between religion and government to band together and strategize. Indeed. So I'm already hard at work. I have secured one big name that I cannot announce, but I'm signing oh. the contract today. It's a really big name. <laughs> but we can also announce some other big names, and they include Catherine Stewart, author of The Good News Club, and her Very new book will be out by that. then. The Power Worshippers. It's going to be a good one. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you have any questions or comments today about our show, our convention, our upcoming convention, please email askanatheist at ffrf.org or write directly in the comments on Facebook, and we'll hope that you will enjoy these highlights. So our first of the day is U.S. Representative Mark Pocan. He accepted our Champion of the First Amendment Award for helping us challenge the exclusionary house prayers. Uh, this was really kind of amazing because he stood before an audience of nearly 700 godless heathens and said he was one of us. I certainly wasn't elected to decide which form or sect of religion is right and which is wrong, but I do know that everyone has a right to their religious faith, and by our laws, everyone has a right to their lack of religious faith. And if you work for the government, you have an obligation to follow our laws, period, which say there is a separation between church and state. It's really that easy. But it's also very important for the 24% of us in this country who don't follow a specific religion to also have their values recognized. We are strongest when we adhere to the values put forth by our Constitution and it doesn't make us a religious nation, just the opposite. They said, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. So I got not just one, but three hugs from my, <laughs> my representative at the convention, so that was really fun. And 24% of us. And we should say, too, that uh, right before he gave that talk, Pew released a new survey that it's actually 26% of us. Yes. So that's quite a statement. It We're is. really pleased to have it. So we also gave an award to Rachel Laser, who is the new president of Americans United. She got our Henry Zumach Freedom from Religious Fundamentalism Award. Actually, it went to $10,000 went to Americans United. And Rachel Laser, who was really delightful, really? spoke about strategies for winning this fight of keeping religion out of government, including coming out as non-religious. FFRF continues to do excellent work with the Out of the Closet campaign, but we need to make a lot more noise. I challenge everyone here to share your own belief system with someone back at home when you leave this conference. But don't just do so with like-minded people. 
The strategy here is also to tell your friends, family, and communities who may have different beliefs. The more buzz we create about the existence of non-theists and the non-religious, and with the growing numbers of this segment of the population, more buzz should be doable, the more welcoming the environment is for others to come out to. I want to acknowledge, however, that like with outing yourself as an LGBTQ person, it can be extremely difficult and even life-threatening to out yourself as a non-theist in certain parts of this country. She was really um, a, a dynamo. and um, She was. It was. We are looking forward to working much more closely with Americans United after meeting Rachel. It was a lot of fun to have her at the office, yeah. too. So Anthony Pinn is one of my favorite speakers and writers. He won our Emperor Has No Clothes Award this year, and he did not disappoint with his message about the harm that religion causes, but also the need that secularism has to be amplified with social justice. And for people who look like me, there is something extra pernicious in the Make America Great Again claim. We've heard this before. We've felt this before. It is a thin veil for a rabid populism and a bizarre sense of whiteness that masquerades as nationalism that does extreme harm. It understands difference as a problem, a problem that has to be addressed in a way that does it in. And religion works to safeguard this. Theism works in a way that provides a moral and ethical rationale for this sort of behavior, but this is not new. This work of religion allowed a justification of the slave trade. It provided a justification for the wiping out of native populations. It provides a rationale and a justification for keeping small brown children in cages and arguing that toothbrushes and showers are luxuries. It provides a rationale, a justification for assuming that we live within the context of a nation that has to be protected through strong barriers that amount to a physical disregard for difference. This is not new. And again, religion undergirds this. Theism provides a justification for this sort of behavior, and it needs to be tackled. Mesmerizing speaker. <laughs> so Aline Pham was one of our two remarkable student award awardees, and she attended to explain and read some of her first place winning high school essay called God Makes No Mistakes. I thought about ninth grade when my friend, whom I still get along with very well, asked me, wait, Aline, you're Christian, right? And I asked him, why would you assume that? I thought to myself, maybe it's because that one time I helped him fix his grammatical errors in his mission trip letter to Mexico. But to my utter disbelief, he replied, well, I mean, I just figured because you're so nice and a good person. <laughs> and this reminds me, I just included this anecdote last night because of Hemant Mehta yesterday who was speaking about this very topic. And I was like, wow, that happened to me too. Um, I would not have hesitated to call him out on this obviously flawed logic. But the funny thing is that my friends seemed to notice his mistake before I could even point it out. And this dangerous association of Christianity with good and everything else with bad is what spews ignorance and hatred throughout our nation. And so I took all these thoughts and many more that had been roaming around my head for years and poured them onto paper or a laptop. And the result was this. God makes no mistakes. Personally, I think he set the oven temperature too high when he cooked up Agent Orange in the Vietnam War, when he stirred Jewish bodies in Nazi Germany, when he sprinkled some cockroaches in the Rwandan genocide. A God did not do that. Humans did. Instead of singing hallelujah and talking to the sky, we should hold ourselves accountable for such terrible atrocities and prevent history from repeating itself. She's going to be one to watch, I think, in the future. Another great talk was Jeremiah Kamara. He's a documentarian and a filmmaker. He screened his new film at our annual 42nd convention. 
and it's called Holy Hierarchy, The Religious Roots of Racism in America. He gave a fantastic preview of the film, and he spoke about racial and religious imagery, and how religion has been a major force, sh major force shaping mistaken notions of racial superiority. So to people of color, especially blacks being the antithesis of white, seeing white biblical imagery uh, causes immeasurable psychological damage, which has helped to you know, lead to severe cases of self-worth and, and um, you know, deep illness of Stockholm Syndrome, as we witnessed in the Botham John, Amber Geiger uh, case. And the humongous statue of a white Jesus in the country of Nigeria. And since colonial uh, America, the imagery throughout the land continues to support the notion of white supremacy. We see mythological white biblical imagery every day in the magazine and book sections of Walmart, Kroger, Walgreens, CVS, and all throughout Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is really, I don't know if they have one here, but it is you know, very Eurocentric. Um, we see the iconic biblical imagery in doctor's offices. You remember how we went to the doctor's office, we saw that children's book? Um, we see it in hospitals, airports, um, billboards, especially on I-75, one of the most traveled highways in the country. We see it in schools and of course uh, in churches and movies. You look at some of the big blockbuster movies that we've had, and I mean, you know, like The Passion of the Christ, that took in close to $400 million. And blacks go to these movies too, and their, their take on these movies are the same. Um, I always tell people that Jesus is white. Even though he never existed, Jesus is white. And they say, <laughs> they say, why do you think that? He's white because he's white in Walmart. Yeah, he had some great lines. Yeah. We don't just need separation of church and state. We need separation of church and state of mind. <laughs> uh, so Nancy Northup also had some great lines, and she received our new Forward Award. It's reserved for individuals who are moving society forward, as she has been doing as president of the Center for Reproductive Rights since 2003, which is a cutting-edge legal and advocacy group for reproductive rights, not just in the United States, but worldwide. The overwhelming majority of women who seek abortion care in Louisiana are low income, and 70% are women of color. The state of Louisiana is just flat out in open deny defiance of the Supreme Court's 2016 precedent. The facts, the law, the Constitution has not changed in the last three years. Two justices of the Supreme Court have changed in the last three years, but a change in who sits on the Supreme Court should not mean a change to our constitutional rights. These admitting privileges laws do nothing to improve the health and safety of women who seek abortion care. Abortion is one of the most safe procedures that a person can have. It has a complication rate near zero. They remain medically unnecessary and create an undue burden. The Constitution demands that our fundamental rights cannot vary from state to state. A law declared unconstitutional in Texas has to be unconstitutional in neighboring Louisiana. So that's what's at stake in this case, and we need to be sure everybody knows about it. And that's where you come in. We need you to be talking about this case. We need the Roberts Court to know that people are aware that it's the same case, know that it can't be distinguished, and want to see that the Supreme Court is not going to be playing politics with our fundamental rights. So that was really interesting to me because it does, she was distilling essentially what's becoming the conventional wisdom with the Roberts Court, and that's you have to shame it into doing the right thing. Publicly shame it for being a political body to get it to do the right thing, that the law is mattering less and less to these judges than advancing some political agenda. And the only way you can stop them is by pointing that out to the public. Right, that they're not political, they're not supposed to be political. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope it works. I, I certainly hope <laughs> it works. Now, one of the most moving talks was by Amber Scora, who wrote Leaving the Witness, which is about her journey out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. She also spoke about the death of her four-month-old son on his first day in daycare. 
Uh, and I've never witnessed such a large crowd being so silent. Religion was born for things like this, for death, for tragedy. It's the ultimate escape from it. My faith, I realize now, looking back, had acted as a buffer to many of these very difficult things of being human, the more devastating emotions of what we had to experience in life. And now, when I lost my son, without that faith, I just experienced his death as nothingness. A child so full of promise, health, and energy, and future just vanished. It was beyond my ability to understand or to accept. And it was the ultimate test for someone who had once had belief. So when people asked if I was tempted to go back to my religion, I could honestly say that if belief were a choice, there are definitely times where I would have chosen it. Because as I said, it was comforting to just turn off the emotions I didn't want to feel, to just believe that there was something else that would resolve them for me. But the truth was is that there was now no believing what I now knew to be a myth at best, a lie at worst, and trying to believe something that you know to be false is not comforting. But let me tell you what I discovered about grief without religion. It has some surprising byproducts. You'll have to listen to the rest of that to get that. Um, she's an advocate for grieving without religion, especially for grieving parents. And you can uh, watch her entire speech to find out more about those surprising byproducts. And also, um, Amber was interviewed, as most of the speakers were, for our new show, Free Thought Matters, mm -hmm. um, the TV show <coughs> that also goes up on YouTube. And if you're in 27% of the nation, you can watch it on Sunday mornings. Now, Mandisa Thomas is the founder and president of Black Nonbelievers. She accepted her much-deserved Free Thought Heroin Award and had some wise words at the beginning of that acceptance speech. It's a very interesting thing for me to be considered a heroine because I am simply an organizer with a background and expertise in hospitality and event management with a heavy secular influence and a proud, uh, very, very proud black woman who definitely saw a need that wasn't being fulfilled in this movement. I wanna take some time to acknowledge some of the influences in my life. Uh, one who was my grandmother, Ethel May Welch. You may have seen me talk about her when I was on Free Thought Matters. Um, also, one of my other heroines, Ida B. Wells. Also, Jeremiah Kamara, who I met in 2010. And I was just inspired by what I saw um, when I fully decided to re-identify as an atheist and when I became more involved with the community. I just said there was, there was a need to be filled. And just like nothing feels like prayer, Nothing fails like just sitting back and waiting for something to be done. <laughs> Cute line. Mm -hmm. Hemet Mehta, editor of The Friendly Atheist, talked about the stigma attached to atheists running for office and how it's beginning to fade. If being an atheist is the only thing anybody knows about you, yeah, that might be political poison. But if it's one of many things people know about you, and it's not the thing you're campaigning on, because why would you? You're running for office it may not be that big of a deal, and it's becoming less of a deal as the years go on. So I hope any of you, you can all run for something. There are like 500,000 elected offices in America. They're not all Congress. It's okay. You can run for something. You can be an atheist, but if you're running for public office, you don't have to dwell on that, but you don't have to be ashamed of it either, and it may not hurt you. Thank you so much. So we didn't have time to put together all of the clips from all of the other speeches, um, in, including um, yours, Andrew, of course, about your new book, The Founding Myth, Why Christian Nationalism is, Nationalism is Un-American, speeches by my heroes, <laughs> Isaac Kramnik and Larry Moore, who wrote The Godless Constitution and Godless Citizens, um, the Avajit Roy Courage mm -hmm. Award, and some 
Nothing Feels Like Prayer Awardees and things like that. But you can find these videos up on FFRF's YouTube channel or at our convention homepage at ffforf.org slash convention 2019. And we do have a lot of photographs by our attorney, Chris Line, who's actually manning the camera I'm speaking into right now, uh, that highlights some of our convention, including the open house that we had here at Freethought Hall. And then we also have some tweets by our communications manager, Lauren Searing. Who's uh, also here in the studio. Who's also here in the studio. So let's take a look at those. There's our Darwin, Darwin silhouette. And that's Rachel at the convention with some of our members. About 660 room. members attended. That's Larry Moore, Godless Constitution, with Isaac Kramnick, Godless Constitution. Nancy Northup, you saw. And that's Jamie Raskin, a U.S. representative, accepting the Clarence Darrow Award. And Sue Coker, introducing Kosher. one of, her, oops, and, one of yes. our awards. And Cheryl Colby, God and Nothing Feels Like Prayer Award. Jeff Charlotte, the family. And Mandy. Thomas. That's Mark right. Pocan, U.S. Representative Mark Pocan. Um, Buzz, the voice of God. And some social moments. There's Debbie Allen from Secular Coalition. And Christina, who's also manning a camera today. <laughs> Womaning. Womaning a camera. There's who's that you. guy? And uh, that's Hank Zumach. Uh, Patrick Elliott, our attorney. Steve uh, Benson. Doing caricatures. Forward Award, Hammett. I'm hoping the legal Betty staff Betty Bowers. Comes out here. Jeremiah. Aline Pham, our student. Avijit Roy Courage awardee, uh, Avanesh Patil. There's Trey Crowder, liberal redneck. Our legal director, Rebecca Markert. Our director of government affairs, Mark Dan. Who's and that? Annie Laurie. Don't recognize myself. <laughs> and with Dan. Glasses. There we go, the co presidents who made it all possible. Betty Bowers. Hilarious. And Andrew Bradley. Anthony Pinn again. There's um, Bon Ahmed. Bon Ahmed. Cheryl Colby with myself and Patrick Elliott. Anthony Pinn. Amber Scora. Jacob McGee, our other student awardee. And there's Steve, Steve Benson. Car our Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist. A devout atheist. The Emperor Has No Clothes Award. Uh, some of the TV shows we were doing. And then I think we've got some tweets coming up. And you can go back and look at the tweets. There's also, we did some Facebook Live. We had um, mm -hmm. Alec Loftus and um, Jasmine Calderon Lopez doing Facebook Live. So those should be available on, on Facebook, right? There, there are she, a few of those up. And yeah. uh, you can also search for the hashtag FFRFCon2019. If you're on Twitter, you see a bunch of tweets and photos, and including some of these. Yeah, we tw they're very good, interesting tweets. Uh, some of their best remarks and some of the best moments. And these are almost all photos by Chris Line as well. Uh, Tweeted for, by Lauren. Yeah, except for some of the selfies, like that one with Amber Scora and Megan Phelps Roper, who escaped the Westboro Baptist Church and has written her own book and was actually speaking at the Wisconsin Book Festival. Yeah, nearby. and they got together. And um, Mandisa with Astoria Goldsby, who's our store manager. And these are, you can't see them all, but those are all of the legal staff, and we introduce them all. And then that's Maddie Ziegler, who um, gave a presentation about our 800 plus uh, complaint letters and 200 plus victories. A 10 full time attorneys now. So these are our Nothing Fails Like Prayer awardees uh, Hemet Mehmet Mehta and, and Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl Colby, Colby. Uh, out in Portland. And they gave their invocations and more legal. Stuff. Ryan um, Jane, who's uh, part of the strategic response, is there on the right. And Rebecca Markert, and then there's Jeff Charlotte, and, and our Abhijit Avanish Roy. Uh, he won the Abhijit Roy Cour Courage Award, uh, and Ab also Patil, yeah. pretended it, to stick a. Yeah, uh, yes, <laughs> a, a pole up his, it, yeah, and um, the founder of Ma, it's called M A N S in India, was assassinated, mm -hmm. just like Abhijit Roy. And um, Avanesh Patil carries on his work, so he got the award. So he was the, showing us some skepticism, how exposing how some of these religious charlatans do some of their tricks. Yeah, he, it's an anti-superstition society in India. We do have a couple questions uh, right. this week. Uh, one of them is that uh, we have somebody wondering where you can find these videos. The easiest link to do is right there on the screen, ffrf.us 
slash 2019 com video. That's the easiest way to do it. FFRF.us. Or frankly, I think it's easier just to go to YouTube, you can go to, the YouTube. to look for FFRF and there's a playlist for our convention. So It'll that's probably easy. be up on Facebook, I would and imagine. You can also go to FFRF.org slash convention 2019. So that's pretty easy to remember. We have another we have another question about asking about um, Jeff Charlotte and Trey Crowder and Sarah Val and those are the ones that you, that's the reason you should come to the convention in person because we can't always put up every video. That's part of the deal. Yeah, sometimes. entertainers are less likely to say yes. And Sarah Vowell even had restrictions. She wouldn't let anyone take photographs from the audience, very limited that we could do. So people have different demands, and um, that's why we tell people you can't. So you, take a video tape come. or audio tape yourself at the convention. And, and same for same for Salman Rushdie last. I mean, yeah. it really that's one of the reasons it really is worth coming. And and Sarah, the Sarah Val conversation with Dan was one of the highlights for me. Yes, yeah, so and really we don't enjoyable. have any pictures of that, and it was very enjoyable. Um, but uh, yeah, there's nothing we can do about yeah. that. That's up to the speaker. Yeah, come to the convention next time. I think. I mean, we're one of the most affordable conventions out there. It was like sixty bucks to register for members. Uh, I mean, because you're not going to find we, a better deal. We know that people have to spend a lot of money on travel and hotels, so we try to keep our registration as low as possible. We make the meals optional. We offer a lot of complimentary mm -hmm. food. So ice cream bars this time. I I, mean, oh, yeah, ice cream bars, popcorn, popcorn yeah. Yeah. Um, so. cupcakes. <laughs> so that was all the questions. So that's our show for this week. Thank you for watching, and yeah. tune in next week for another episode at noon central of FFRF's Ask an Atheist. And, and if you did come, thanks for coming. And making it a success, and don't forget to mark your calendar for next year's FFRF convention in San Antonio, November 13th through 15th. So we hope to see you there, and we hope to celebrate.